Today I'm showing you how to paint these two simple landscapes. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I already put down some washi tape on the borders of my pages to make it look a little bit more cohesive. And now I'm starting to put in some very simple shapes to start off with. By the way, the reference pictures that I used for these two paintings that I'm going to show you are from another artist and she doesn't only do photography but she also paints and has an Instagram channel called Nicole's Art Journal and I'm going to link both of her Instagram pages down in my description box if you want to check those out. And she agreed that I could use the pictures for a tutorial so you can follow the tutorial without any fear of getting copyright issues so just go ahead and follow my tutorial if you feel inspired by it so now that's out of the way um, I just put down very simple shapes like I said and it's not so hard that I must explain what I'm doing here I'm just uh, I have just put down some green and blue for the sky. Here's a bit of a trickier part. I already put down some water for, for our second painting and now I'm going to make a gradient from this pink, purple, ha, it's hard to talk, uh, from this purple color to this ultramarine blue color. By the way, you can use all kinds of colors that you have and you can switch those however you want them to look. So you don't have to use the exact same colors as me. That's why I don't always tell what kind of colors I use. I think the green that I used is a sub green. I really like this color and a lot of people don't like it, but I think it's a very beautiful green tone. So now I'm putting down more of this grass area and now on the top painting I'm starting to put in a little bit more details. I'm going to put in those mountains that you can see on the reference picture and for that I used a bit of a darker color. It's a very dark blue and it's sort of a silhouette in a way and it's very easy and you don't have to do the exact same shape it will always look like a mountain and that's the fun thing about it and now i'm starting to put down those trees in the foreground and i just just did these um, lines with my brush you can see what i did here and uh, it's very easy and you get this very nice texture texture <laughs> and uh, it doesn't look exactly like a tree but it kind of indicates that there is a tree and now I'm doing the mountain of the second painting it's just like the first one and I'm sort of blending it out to become a bit lighter at the bottom you can't really see that in the reference picture because it's not there but I thought that it would look cool if the mountain looked a little bit more had a little bit of a lighter tone on the bottom because it's like sort of misty or I think it looks a bit magical <laughs> and you know that I like that so and um, now I'm kind of filling the gaps on the first painting here I'm just very loosely painting you can see that these two paintings are very loose if you want to add more details in the end then just go ahead but I thought that it was a just a fun little project I think it took for both paintings it took 45 minutes but that's with recording the video so on the top painting we have some houses in the distance and I didn't want to paint every single house because again it's a very loose painting and that's why I just indicated them with those dots. I put down some brown and some bluish dots and then I added trees here in the foreground as well with a bit of a darker green. It's just playing around with different tones using lighter ones and using darker ones and if you do it uh, 
a lot of times you will get the sort of the hang of it and yeah it's the same here I'm doing these lines for the trees and now I'm starting with the trees in, that you can see on the right side and that's just a line in the middle and then I'm putting more of those on the sides you can see what I'm doing I hope uh, you can understand what I'm doing here because it's hard to explain those things are always harder to explain than they are to see on the footage but I hope that you understand what I'm talking about and now filling sort of filling the gap here uh, by the way I leave those gaps at purpose because I want those parts to be a bit lighter so that I have some highlights and shadows because with watercolor you can never go back to a lighter tone you have to leave the gaps so that you have the white paper unless you are using some sort of white wash I'm going to use that later on but most of the time for watercolors you just use you go from light to dark so you have to keep in mind where you want the lighter parts to be and here's this path that I did I added a brown at first you saw that earlier and then I did a bit of a shadow with a darker tone and yeah I'm just adding more and more mountains and the ones that are way far back are lighter and when you get more to the foreground all the things that you see get darker and darker so on the bottom picture you can really see that that the trees that are close to us are darker and the ones who are more far back are a bit lighter and this makes it a little bit more three-dimensional of course it's a two-dimensional painting but this adds a little bit of character to the painting and then I went back and made those trees darker as well because they are in the foreground and even though they might have a lighter tone than the mountain in the back I added more paint just because of that reason that they are closer and I think that it looks really cool and I really love this loose style I have to experiment more with that because I tend to do very detailed pieces and I sort of have to hold back and not over complicate things and I think those tutorials are a very nice way for me to do that because I can't do too complicated things because it's hard to follow that and yeah that's why I really love doing those tutorials let me know in the comments down below if you ever tried one of my tutorials and if they are easy or hard to follow and what you would like to change now I'm using the white wash that I mentioned earlier. It's an opaque white paint. It comes with some watercolor sets and it's not expensive at all. You can buy that on your on on its own <laughs> and you don't have to buy it with a set, but at least in my country when you buy cheap watercolors you get that always. And it's so easy to do clouds with that. That's why I used that for the clouds in the foreground or is it the foreground not really but uh, they are in front of the mountain and I mixed it with a little bit of pink just because those pictures had a little bit of pinkish tint and I really loved that and now I'm I'm just using um, a brush that's not too wet and I'm putting down these dots and blending that a little bit with the background and then when I now I'm adding it with uh, less water so that it's more opaque and that way it gets a bit more dimension and it's so easy I already did a tutorial on how to paint clouds so I'm going to link that you might want to watch that one as well because it's super easy way easier than this one and you will get the hang of how to paint clouds and yeah but it's it's not rocket science so uh, just experiment with it and you will get to know how you want the clouds to look because there are obviously different styles on how you can do that and I'm just adding more and more layers and then I'm done 
and removing the tape. I really love this and yeah, now we have those two paintings. I really hope that you liked this video and if you did so, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week. Goodbye!